Hey, good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have a big update on the storms that are coming. I'm showing, as a matter of fact, we have three storms coming. All of them going to be strong, especially that third one. Now, both models, Euro and GFS, is starting to agree with each other. And not only that, they're both showing almost, if not over, five feet of snow for some places. Plus, the wind gusts are showing very strong on both of them, and they're showing anywhere from 60 to 80 plus miles per hour wind gusts. And it's definitely going to be where it's going to be snow, and it's definitely going to be blizzards, and if not that, probably going to be whiteout conditions. I'm going to go through the timing and the impacts for you so you know exactly when and where this is going to take place. Please share this information so people can find out where this is going to happen and when is going to be the worst part of it. And if you've never been here before, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have been here over five years. I will be here for you every day. Just not Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That's Sabbath. But I'll make sure you have all the information you need. Hit that like button if you are loving these updates, guys. And let's get into what you have coming. Now, when you look at your Arctic Oscillation to see when this cold air is coming down, they are both starting to agree now. Euro is coming a little deeper, a little stronger, and GFS is kind of tracking back a little bit to what the Euro shows. But the GFS shows we have another one coming after this round of storms. Now, the Euro shows us that it will be starting coming down around the 10th or the 11th, and this is when we're going to get the one storm, the double storm around the 12th and the 13th. But it's going to stay down all the way to the 15th and the 16th and possibly headed back towards a positive phase. GFS is showing that we have another one coming after this. GFS confirms that it will be coming down around the 10th or the 11th, and it will be a strong cold spill all the way from the 12th all the way to the 15th. But if you notice, GFS takes it on another dip even deeper into our country to all the way to the negative two, right past the 16th. So we do have another one coming, and it's a little too far to tell, but possibly another one after that. When you start getting around Sunday and also Tuesday, they have a severe weather outlook, especially for the Texas, Oklahoma area. So on Sunday, you already have a 15% chance of severe weather for upper Texas, Oklahoma, and lower Kansas as well. And your city and states are right here for Sunday's severe weather. And for Tuesday, it's going to be almost in the same area, a little bit more to the west, Texas, Oklahoma, and southern Kansas. And here's your cities and states for Tuesday's severe weather. Plus you do have a elevated and a critical fire risk for today. And here's your cities and states that are in that risk for today. And here's your storms according to the Euro. Starting on Saturday, it'll start brewing up a nice system in the Midwest, but then it'll start getting elongated and stretch all the way down towards Texas as you go into Sunday. Once you go into Sunday afternoon, then it's gonna start strengthening up and you're literally gonna have two systems. And the GFS is showing that this is just one big elongated system. This is going to bring 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts all the way from Texas all the way up to the Midwest. And this is why you have that big severe weather risk for Sunday because you have a strong system all the way down to 996 brewing up over Texas as it heads north and following the same high ridge up to the Midwest. Then on Tuesday, that third storm is going to come in very strong all the way down to 996. And by Tuesday afternoon, it's going to stretch all the way down by Texas, Oklahoma, and for Kansas as well. And these systems are counterclockwise, so it is spinning this way, bringing all the winds and all the rainfall on the right side of the storm. Then as you go into late Tuesday into Wednesday morning, it'll start drifting north, getting very strong. Euro shows it down to 990, but the GFS shows it very much stronger. Now, the only thing's different is the timing on the GFS with the Euro. The GFS shows that it does strengthen up by Friday afternoon. Then it starts headed to the Midwest. But as you go into Saturday, then you can see it gets all elongated into one big system all the way from Minnesota all the way down to New Mexico. And this will bring a lot of winds and a lot of rain on the east side of this storm. And just like the Euro showed, it does break apart as it goes into Saturday and then as you go into Sunday. While you still have a low pressure system, very strong down to a 999, still over Texas, still over Oklahoma as you go into Sunday afternoon. Finally weakens down and heads over the Ohio Valley itself. Then the big system brews up from the southwest and it gets very strong. As the other system moves over to Ohio Valley, bringing 30 and 40 miles per hour wind gusts, the third system gets all the way down to a 983 by Tuesday afternoon. Very strong system covering all the way from 
Mexico all the way to the edge of Canada. That is a very big and elongated system. It will be bringing some winds with that. And as you go into Wednesday morning, it actually strengthens up even more as it heads towards the Midwest down to a 981 for Wednesday afternoon. Then it goes towards Canada and it starts leaving out by Thursday morning. When you look through the whole process through the Euro, you can see that a lot of people are in the 50 miles per hour wind gusts. And there is a lot of 60 as well as 60 is that light blue. But when you check and see who's in 60 or above, you can tell that New Mexico is definitely in 60 to 70 miles per hour wind gusts as this system does come on by. Then as it heads north through Wyoming, Colorado, Dakotas, even the western half of Nebraska, then you're going to be getting some strong winds. And I'm showing still 80 something miles per hour wind gusts still for Colorado and we even getting strong 70s for Wyoming for the Dakotas also for western Nebraska it has 70 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this storm as it goes but you can see everybody that is in high 40s to 50 miles per hour wind gusts as the system goes up towards the Midwest this is a lot of area with a lot of bad damage and winds. And with all this area that's getting all this snow, they definitely gonna be in blizzard conditions with all this wind gusts and probably even whiteout conditions. Now the wind gusts are still showing different for both models. You can see how GFS don't take it that far to the east, but it still shows that New Mexico is definitely gonna get some 60 miles per hour wind gusts, high 60s, and so is Colorado as well. It's showing Wyoming and Colorado's will get anywhere from 60 miles per hour wind gusts to high 50s. Euro shows that could be almost 80. And the Euro is pretty much showing the same thing for the next five days. Colorado, heavy, major snowfall for northern Utah, major snowfall for Wyoming, and you're going to get some of the higher elevations of Washington and California. And the GFS also agrees that you will have some heavy snowfall for Colorado, possible major snowfall. Northern Utah, good chance for up to a foot. Uh, within the next five days and Wyoming a good chance for a foot or more now this is where the models are different the snowfall totals and where they at according to the euro you will have very heavy major snowfall for Wyoming western South Dakota Colorado northern Utah and it's five to eight inches maybe a spot for more for Idaho and Montana now the euro shows for Wyoming Gillette can get anywhere from 37 to 40 inches of snowfall just within that five day period. And the heaviness is just east of you with almost 60 inches of snowfall, 58 inches. Casper, almost two feet of snow, and right south and east of you is over 50 inches of snowfall. So there's a lot of snowfall coming, especially for Wyoming. Now, so far for Rapid City, South Dakota is showing only three inches, but just a little west of you is almost a foot and a half. And if you go all the way to the edge of the state, that's where the 58 inches. So it could move over just a little bit and you could get a lot heavier snowfall. Now the GFS shows almost the same locations, except it shows heavier snowfall for Montana as well as for Idaho. But it don't show the heavy, heavy snowfall yet for Wyoming, Utah, or Colorado until a little bit later. GFS brings that third storm about five to seven days later, while Euro shows that it's just consistent one after another. Plus, GFS shows that we have another one or two coming after that. But just within the next 10 days, it does show anywhere up to a foot or more of snowfall for Montana, Idaho, and especially for Wyoming. It's still showing that you're anywhere from three to four feet of snowfall still, according to GFS and Euro. But a big difference within the next 10 days. Euro showed crazy amounts. GFS shows within the next 10 days, Gillette is only going to get 12 to 13 inches instead of the four to five feet possibility. It also shows that right below Casper, Casper getting six, right below you is about four feet of snowfall. Now, when you go a few more days out, now GFS is showing some pretty major impacts. It's not showing it as heavy for Wyoming. It's still showing the four feet of snowfall for this general area, but it's showing a heavy snowfall will be in Montana and Idaho, where Euro is showing that it will not be. And that would bring Great Falls, Montana, over four feet of snowfall. And just a little east of you is 60 inches, a whole nother foot. 
Also for Idaho, it's showing that Boise, you only get a couple inches. Idaho Falls, a couple inches. But just north of you is over 40 inches of snowfall. So this could easily come down some. So GFS is showing us a little northern. Euro is showing us a little eastern and southern. Now when you look at the 500 millibar height, you can see when these storms start to come through. And you can see how these first two systems are nice and elongated over Texas, New Mexico, all the way to Minnesota. And that's why you have that severe weather risk for Sunday. And that'll stay nice and cool and bring 50 and 60 degree temperatures straight across to the East Coast. But that third system, the one that's coming from the Northwest, it will bring a very deep trough and go well into our country all the way towards Arizona with some very cool temperatures. And it'll swing up on a very high ridge towards the Dakotas. And look how cold all that is. That is very cold air. And you see with the tight isobars, it's very much damage and winds going around it as well. But as you watch that third system swing up and go away, that's pretty much the end of the storms. But GFS shows that right after that system goes away that we will be having another one come down and it's coming in even colder from the Northwest and it will be affecting the Northwest a little more than what they're getting now. Then after that one, then we got a really cold system coming in and look at that very bright pinks coming in on that. So we have an even bigger snowstorm coming after we deal with these storms. Now when this system moves in on Sunday and it starts getting elongated all the way from Minnesota all the way to Texas, it will put a long spread of 40, high 30s to 40 miles per hour wind gusts all the way from Wisconsin all the way to Texas. And it will last about 12 hours and it does get all the way up to almost 50 miles per hour wind gusts, especially for Oklahoma and Kansas as it moves away. But as that third and bigger system moves in on Tuesday, it actually brings a big widespread of 50, almost 60 miles per hour wind gusts all across Arizona, New Mexico. It's even getting stronger for New Mexico, up to 70. Utah, Colorado, even portions of Mexico. As it swings by, look at this big broad area of 50 miles per hour wind gusts as the storm brews by. And now you're getting 70s for Colorado and Utah as well as the storm just continues to sit here and spin and grow for over 24 hours for y'all. So it will be a lot of winds coming with that. Now the Euro shows that when a first storm comes in, it comes in at a 990, so pretty strong, but it brings 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts to Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming gets 50 miles per hour wind gusts. It gets strong all the way up to 60 for Saturday for Colorado. Then as you go into Sunday, you still have that risk over Texas, New Mexico with 40, 50 miles per hour wind gusts as that system gets elongated. Euro don't show it stays connected as long as GFS. And then it goes off on its own on Sunday into the central US with 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. But the Euro also shows that that third system, that the biggest system out of all three, when it comes in, there's periodic pieces of 50 miles per hour wind gusts, but then it explodes with over 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts going all the way from Mexico all the way up towards Wyoming. And New Mexico really gets a lot of heavy winds out of this system. Then as you go into Wednesday, it brings the 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts towards the central U.S., while Wyoming and Colorado now is still in the 60s all the way down to New Mexico with very strong winds and it gets very fierce for Wyoming. I know people in Wyoming said that they're very used to this, but 70 miles per hour wind gusts is very dangerous. And with all the snow y'all gonna be getting, it definitely will be blizzards, it definitely will be wide out conditions. It gets into the high 70s for Colorado, especially as the system moves by through the Midwest. And so far that's the impacts guys. I will keep you updated daily on this so we can get this narrowed down to who, when, and where. But I had to do an early video this morning because I have a big day today with the kids on the homeschool. They're getting ready for some testing for this week. So thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I know I used to upload every morning, very early, every day for quite some time. And I'm going to go back into that schedule. And especially going into the winter of the season, I want to be early like I used to be. So I'm going to start uploading early again and maybe possibly an update every afternoon so we can stay updated on what's going on. So if you enjoyed the video and it helped you in any way, please hit that like button, show support for my channel, and please share this on social media. Let people get alerted that you do have a potential for five feet of snow coming for some people, as well as that wind gust. That's going to be damaging winds. That is going to cause a lot of issues, and it's more than just one state. It's all across the country, pretty much. At the same time, happy Wednesday to all of you. Hope you have a very blessed 
day today. I want to speak to you today about the word from our father. And today he has some things to do with the weather as well. Job 37. At this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth. He thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into the dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he weareth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud. And it is turned round about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world and the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still, and consider the wondrous works of God. Doest thou know when God disposed them, and caused the light of his cloud to shine? Doest thou know the balances of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge? How thy garments are warm when he quieteth the earth by the south the wind. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of the north, with God is terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice, he will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. Amen. Have a great day today, guys. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I do hope this kind of helped you out a little bit today. It looks like both models are starting to agree now, finally. <laughs> uh, impacts on the snowfall, the heavy snowfall, different places. It'll come together. All glory. <laughs> Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a very blessed day today, guys. God bless you all. <laughs>